The Eagles, of course, still alive in the playoff picture. Now, if the Eagles were to lose today, then the Cowboys could clinch the NFC East. Bonio set to kick off to Herschel Walker and Thomas Lewis. Lewis, number 81. Both of them have a lot of speed. Bonio starts it. It will be Lewis at the four. With room. Chased down and knocked out of bounds by Darren Woodson. Headed for the Pro Bowl is Woodson. Deservedly so. Dave Brown quarterbacks the Giants. The offensive line in front of him, Elliott Bishop, Williams, Lance Smith starting, and Doug Riesenberg. Hampton the deep back, Charles Way the blocker, Sherrard, Callaway wide, and Howard Cross the tight end. Dave Brown. 5-0 oh, as a starter in December in his four-year career. He did not have a good day last year in this stadium. Fake to Hampton. Rolls and throws. Intercepted by Brock Marion on the first play. Bounced off the hand of a giant receiver. And the Cowboys get a break on the first play from scrimmage. Welcome those of you watching Carolina Atlanta. This is the first play at Texas Stadium. Well, they started to try and fool the Cowboys. Start off with a bootleg pass. It did hold the linebackers, but it didn't hold Brock Marion. And this is what Dan Reeves said yesterday. He hoped would not happen that the Cowboys got a break early and got a chance to break on top early. And Emmett Smith said yesterday, he said, you know, in these last couple games, we haven't gotten any breaks. Well, they got one there. The Incomplete, good coverage on Novacek, but a flag down is on Michael Irvin. Beg your pardon. Word from Veterans Stadium, Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Davis, number 22 on the defense. First down. Red Cashin. The referee again back at Veterans Stadium. Davis, the Arizona kicker, was short on a field goal attempt from near midfield, 47 yards. And so the Eagles have the ball leading by a point. First down, Cowboys, Emmett Smith. Near the 40, stopped by Brooks. Let's look at the Dallas offense. Number eight is Troy Aikman. And in front of him, that massive offensive line, Tuiney Newton, Derek Kennard, Larry Allen, and Eric Williams. Emmett Smith and Daryl Johnston in the backfield. Kevin Williams and Michael Irvin wide, and Jay Novacek's the tight end. Novacek, there's been some doubt about whether or not he'd be able to play, and if he did, how long he'd be able to play with a bad knee and a bad ankle. Leapy Sparks of the Giants is going wherever Michael Irvin goes today. Novacek on the move, and this is Emmett Smith around the corner. First down, Cowboys and out of bounds. Randolph. Knocked him out of bounds. Let's look at the giant defensive unit. Jamal Duff, Agnew, Hamilton, and Harris. Duff instead of Strahan. Crow, Brooks, and Miller are the linebackers. And the secondary, Sparks and Thomas Randolph, the cornerbacks, Vincey Glenn and Jesse Campbell. The safeties. And there goes Sparks, as John Madden said, with Michael Irvin. Sparks already has a penalty on him because he says he's going to be more physical than Irvin. Aikman to throw. Steps up. Throws incomplete. Intended for Novacek. Covered by Jesse Campbell. And covered well. And Felipe Sparks says he's really looking forward to playing against Michael Irvin because all defensive backs like that. I mean, you know, I mean, that's a challenge. That's what they want. That's the kind of guy you have to be if you're going to be in a corner. And he said, Michael Irvin is a physical guy, but when he gets physical with me, I'm going to get more physical with him. And early in this game, he got too physical yep. with him because they called a penalty on him. On the first play, Dallas ran. 
It's second and ten at the giant 40. Aikman gets in with Smith. Smith has no room. Run out of bounds by Sparks. And it wasn't Larry Allen's fault. Did you see him? I mean, he is so big and so strong and so fast and so fast and, and powerful. He just comes out here and knocks Corey Miller down. Watch him. He's just going to pull from right here. Now watch him come out here. Watch the power that he hits with. Boom. I mean, guys just crumple. I mean, their knees yeah. buckle and they just go right to the ground. Now, look what Sparks has to do. Now, we talk about Fleepy Sparks being on Michael Irvin. He has to cover him, zone him, bump him. But if they sweep towards him, he has to be the guy that's up in support. Third and ten, somebody jumped. Aikman went on a long count. They might have jumped off sides. That still wouldn't be enough for a first. But I don't know that I've ever seen a guy that is as powerful as Larry Allen. Ball start, number 84 on the offense. Novacek. Five yards, still third down. 84, of course, is Jay Novacek. He's right up here on top. And you're going to see they're trying to get some movement, and Jay Novacek moves before the ball snap. So that makes it third and even longer, 15, 16. Jay Novacek really only practiced one day all week, Pat. He has a knee and ankle injury and only practiced on Friday. Daryl Johnston is the move man. Emmett Smith deep. Nate to throw it. Has time. Caught by Michael Irvin. And a flag on the play. After the catch, that flag came in late. And this is what I think the Cowboys have to do. They just can't say they're doubling Michael Irvin, they're zoning him, we're not going to throw it to you. I think a great receiver, you have to throw it to him even when he is doubled. The 49ers have done it for years. This is against the Giants. And I think that was one of the problems with the Cowboys is that if you would rotate towards Michael Irvin with your corner, then the read would take him off him. Pass interference, number 22 on the defense. That penalty is declined. First down. And as Sparks said that he was going to be physical with Michael Irvin. See, now, if you would just watch Troy Aikman here, he's going to stay with Michael Irvin. Yep. It's not going to be one of those things where he's going to read. You're going to see the penalty here. Here's Felipe Sparks when he puts his hands on him right there. You see, that is double coverage. But if the quarterback has confidence and you have a great receiver, you can still get the ball to him. Smith. Inside the 15. Then C. Glenn made the stop. Yeah, this is a thing that Fleepy Sparks said yesterday, Pat, that when they got close, when Michael Irvin got close to him, he was going to grab him. And you see him grab him by that jersey there? What that does, it's a technique. If you don't get caught, it's pretty good because yeah. it pulls you towards the receiver. But that time, it didn't do him any good either way. Well, there's a guy that's been under fire. Not Dan Reeves so much recently, although a couple of weeks ago he was. Emmett Smith again. Smith gets down to the 10. I was speaking of Barry Switzer. And the criticism that has been aimed at him after those two calls in Philadelphia last week has been beyond belief almost. It's yeah. been incredible all over the country. Yeah, you know, because they, they win for it and then they didn't get it and then that put the Eagles in position to win the game and the Eagles won the game and you have to live with that. Uh, it was a decision that I didn't agree with <laughs> at the time and I still don't Nor agree did I. with it. But, but at some point, I think, I think the players and the coaches and everyone they have to let that one go and get on with it because this is still a team that is 10 and 4 and has clinched a playoff berth. Well that's one of the keys as you've often said to playing cornerback you got to have a bad memory and when something like that happens you also need a bad memory. Yeah I always I always thought that the last game in your mind win or lose had to be out of it by Wednesday you know that you could think about it Sunday night Monday and Tuesday but on Wednesday you couldn't the Eagles have clinched the playoff spot with a one point victory over Arizona 21 20 they were down 14 nothing early now let's see if the if the Cowboys can get that yard now this is third and short though not fourth and short right that same situation they had last week different formation different play but he didn't get much it was Emmett Smith again 
now Barry Switzer may have that same decision, Pat. He may have that fourth down decision here and have to go for it. I don't think that's the same situation. No, he had their own no. 29, though, but he nope. may have that fourth down situation because they didn't get any movement there, and Emmett Smith didn't get a first down on that play. It's very close, and they don't show any signs of putting a field goal unit on the team. Well, what they're going to the do is ask for a measurement. I think they're going to be short, and I think that the Cowboys will go for it on fourth down, and again, it will be Emmett Smith. And they're about a foot short. If you had a quarterback, there was a good quarterback sneak runner, you would have Troy Aikman sneak, but he does not run a quarterback sneak. Oh, they're going for it. They're, they're going to kick the field goal. Now, last week, I wouldn't have gone for it on fourth down. I would have punted. And I'm saying this before they do it. This week, I would have gone for it on fourth down in this situation. And Bonio was on with Novacek to hold. Decisions, decisions. It's well, part of being a head coach. Well, yeah, if last week you did it because you had great confidence in your offensive line, what does it mean this week when you're down here and you don't? 27-yard field goal by Boniol is good, and the Cowboys lead it 3-0. On the other side, I think it's good to get points on the board. Yeah, right? you don't want to come away dry. Uh, we've talked about that all the time. That You know, that the toughest points that you have to get in any football game are the first ones. Of course, I think the Giant defense did a good job because they started off their first play was a turnover, an interception. And then their defense came in, and really, the Cowboys had good field position, but the Giant defense at least didn't let him get seven points. If you, there's Charles Haley who had back surgery. He was the man who rushed the passer for the Cowboys. He's out for the rest of the year. Maybe he says he'll be able to come back if they do get to the NFC Championship game. I doubt it. Well, he had the back surgery a week ago and he said that the doctor told him that he wants him to do nothing. He said, in fact, he can't do anything now. He said, but look at it in two weeks. He said, two weeks from now or a week from now, he'll have to go back, you know, two weeks after the surgery. And he said by then he could tell whether he was going to be okay to play this year or not, or to play at all or not. Bonio, who just hit that 27-yard field goal, will kick off. The Cowboys got the pass interception, a deflection that landed in the hands of Brock Marion, and they got, out, got three out of it. Herschel Walker, Thomas Lewis back deep for the Giants. Line drive kick handled by Walker. Played many games here. Walker. Watson Davis down to make the tackle. Those of you who watch the Philadelphia victory, welcome to Texas Stadium, where Dallas is up 3-0. St. Louis also, the St. Louis Rams, have been eliminated. And those of you who watch that, welcome to Texas Stadium. First and 10 Giants at their own 26. Smith made the stop. Let's look at the Cowboy defensive unit. Chad Hennings is number 95. He's in the middle with Hervin McCormick. The two tackles, the ends are Leon Lett and Tony Tolbert. Smith, Miles, and Edwards, the linebackers. And the secondary, Deion Sanders, Brock Marion, Darren Woodson, and Larry Brown. Second and seven. Hampton got three. Howard cross moves from left to right. Take it down short of the 35 by Dixon Edwards. You know, that's one of the things the Giants want to do today is get some motion and some movement. See, because Deion Sanders is going to the wide receiver on the side of the tight end. So what they do is they put the tight end, Howard Cross, on one side, then Deion Sanders goes to the wide receiver on that side, then they move the tight end to the other side, so then that put him on the weak side. If that makes any sense. That's what they did. Does to me. Third and about two. And Brown back to 
to throw it. Out to Chris Callaway, and it'll be a giant first down. See, and that's the other thing they want to do to Deion Sanders is get some movement. He likes to play the outside receiver. So Callaway started that time as the outside receiver, win in motion. Now, when Dion goes with him, now Callaway is not the outside receiver anymore. He is a slot receiver. See, now here's Dion here. See, now, now he's the outside guy. And now when he goes in motion, you see? See what that does to Dion Sanders? That puts him inside. Then he becomes the inside corner on the slot. Hampton, no gain after the first down. Irvin McCormick. Well, Russell Maryland, you know, injured his toe uh, last week. He's not active today, and he's the he's the guy that really plays well in there at, at, at tackle for the Cowboys, especially against the run. Irvin McCormick is playing his place today. Welcome Maryland the other day. He knew he couldn't play today, but he thinks he'll be back for next week. Irvin McCormick's a guy that just hung around for a year and a half, and now he's getting a lot of playing time. This is Hampton again. And Hampton tripped up by Deion Sanders. For a McDonald's game break, let's send you back to Hollywood and James Brown. Pat Philadelphia's defense helped them make it into the playoffs. Greg Davis had been pushed back by eight yards because of a sack by the Eagles. He missed that field goal attempt. That was a 47-yarder. The Eagles are in the playoffs with that one-point victory over Arizona. Let's take you back to Pat and John. Ray Rhodes, who coaches the Eagles, has done one heck of a job. Third and four, the Giants at their own 49. Sherrard, the man in motion, Brown back to throw. And takes off with it, slides, and that's the Giant first down. Slides, probably not a good word for it. Dive for a first down. Just kind of dive or fly, but you see one thing, that you, you can't leave a lane open. See your pass rush lanes, if we can just stop it here, you see, when you rush out this way and you rush out this way, you give a big lane here, not only to run in like Dave Brown does, but to throw in. And that's the tackle's fault. You can't have both of your defensive tackles working outside the guards on a pass rush. Hampton and Charles Way, the two runners behind Brown. Fake is to Hampton. We are left was in Brown's face in a hurry. Brown just threw that one away. I they mean, had that's, to. Yeah, that's something. When you make a play fake and you see a big number 78 coming at you, watch Leon Led here. He's going to be a heck of a defensive end. Well, watch him. He's just going to go to Jumbo Elliott's inside, give him that move, and when Dave Brown makes that play fake, he looks to his left, and the first thing that he sees is Leon Lett. Watch this. See him? He comes out of the play fake, and he puts his head up, and he sees number 78 white. You don't see people beat Jumbo Elliott like that, that cleanly very often. Leon Lett is going to be good here, and I'm sure that he learned that from Charles Haley. I'm sure that's what Charles Haley told him to do. Here's Brown back to throw it. Swings it outside to Hampton. There's not much room there, but he makes, with his own sheer strength, about four yards, Dixon Edwards to make the stop. As Charles Haley was saying yesterday, he told Leon, you just can't get in a grunt contest with this guy. I mean, if he's back off, you have to give him that that headbutt and that bull rush, but when he's up on the line of scrimmage, you gotta give him that inside move, and that's exactly what Leon Lett did then. Neil Teacher over there, he'd be pretty proud of that. <laughs> yeah. He's eating those sunflowers. He's, he's eating the heck out of those things today. That's good for your back. <laughs> Bates and Case in the Cowboy Nickel package. Three wide receivers for the Giants, and here comes Chad Henning. Yep, and that's because Leon Lett went to the inside. That's that stunt that the Cowboys run so well. You see, here's Leon Lett, and here's Chad Henning. Now, when he goes in, he's going to come out, and they have to be able to zone that. But watch what this does. You see, when Lett goes to the inside there, they pick him off, but in picking him off, they get off of Chad Henning. Because Bishop was blocking on Hennings, then he went to Lett, and then when he went to Lett, Hennings was free. Kevin Williams back deep. Mike Horan, the left-footed kicker. High, good kick. Good kick. 
Ooh, they almost let it bounce and go in the end zone. They had it surrounded. And they down it at about the two. Corey Whitmer down to down it. The teacher and the pupil. Dallas three, the Giants nothing. An official's conference, and now Red Cashin says timeout. The Cowboys three, the Giants nothing in the first quarter at Texas Stadium. Stadium, that wasn't Texas Stadium. That was an ice arena you see in those Dallas. People? Yeah, there weren't a lot of people with their ankles pointing out. <laughs> this is Leon Lett. They're fixing his pants on that stunt. He blew his pants out. I hope they don't go too deep. Emmett Smith gets it out to the five. Covers up there from the hit from Corey Miller. Boy, he must, that must have been some. Well, it was that it was that <laughs> stunt. I mean, he ran. You know, we saw the one time where he got the where he hit Dave Brown on that play pass yeah. going inside Jumbo. Then we saw him taking inside yeah. on that stunt. Now they're punching and, holes in it. Well, he blew out. <laughs> No, he blew out half his clothes. Oh, so now smoke. that was some stunt. Well, they, <laughs> they punch those holes, then they then they lace it up. That's yeah. how you lace. You punch holes, and then you put stuff through to get laced. There's Aikman to throw it out of the end zone. Kevin Williams and Aikman miscommunication. You see what they're doing there, Pat? You see they punch those holes, and now they put the shoestring through it. Everybody's got a line of clothing. Maybe this will be let's. This isn't bad, though. I mean, get, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just blow out your pants and yeah. blow out your shirt on one play. And then they take some shoestring and tie you back yeah. together. Yeah. Well, they'll probably cut that off. Yeah, now you're talking. Yeah. <laughs> well, can't beat that. So we're going to need Betsy Ross before we're through. Deion Sanders is in as a wide receiver. Incomplete from Aikman intended for Dion in his direction. Yeah, I still think that, you know, when the Cowboys start off, if they're going to get in a rhythm, and Troy Aikman hasn't been in a rhythm in Not the last yet. three or four weeks, but I think that rhythm has to come from Troy Aikman throwing to Michael Irvin or Jay Novacek and running the ball to Emmett Smith. I think when they try and go to Kevin Williams like they did there, they get Dion in there, I think that throws their rhythm off. This is Jet. Back at the end of the end zone to put out of there to Arthur Marshall. Giants should get this ball in pretty good shape, although this is a good punt. Yet got all of it. But Arthur Marshall gets away from the first man. Is met by Swance at midfield. Jim Swance has done a heck of a job lately on special teams for Dallas. 3-0, the Cowboys lead a 53-yard punt. Picture starting to clear a little bit. The top six teams, remember, make the playoffs. San Francisco with the Atlanta loss today. Clinch the NFC West. Dallas is in. Philadelphia's in. Green Bay's in. Way the man in motion. Hampton, the ball carrier. Chased by Henning. Missed at the sideline, and he's finally knocked out of bounds by Brock Marion. See, that's the thing that Leon Lett does well, too, is he not only you know, is a good pass rusher as a defensive end, but he also plays the run well, and that's what you have to do. You know, I mean, this sweep, he just kept him going right down the line. You just watch him here. You want to boom, hang in here, and then just come right down the line with your guy. Don't get moved. Don't get hooked. Don't get turned in. See how they try and hook him? And he just keeps working to the outside, working to the outside, and then right down the line of scrimmage so there's no cutback. They never get to his body. Two right. Hampton to the 40. Darren Smith made the stop very close to a giant first down. You know, everyone that you talk to when they play the Giants always talk about how big Rodney Hampton is. I mean, most most tailbacks aren't that big. I mean, he's kind of fullback size when you get around 230, yeah. 235 pounds. And he may not be the fastest or the quickest, but when you tackle him, it feels like you're tackling a guard. It's not like you're tackling a running back. First and ten. 
Gerard was the man in motion. Brown back to throw. Chased again. Screen pass to Hampton. He got some room. Hampton, another giant first down to the 25. Stopped by Woodson. 15 yards. The screen pass. Well, here's the thing is they is, is he's in the backfield so they know that if they're going to run the ball it's going to be Rodney Hampton so then they try and throw him this screen it's another way in lieu of a run to get him the ball and get him outside he got a couple blocks down there and made a couple of moves and then at the end it takes a whole bunch of guys to get yep. him down but he always gets another yard or two most of the guys that get him down are going in the opposite direction and on their backs first and ten Giants at the Cowboy 25. This is Hampton. Godfrey Miles at the bottom of the stack. Godfrey Miles. Yeah, it's funny you see a guy like Rodney Hampton out here today, Pat. I saw him in the lobby of the hotel last night, and he was with his his uh, teacher, Mrs. Hamilton, and she was his 11th grade teacher, history teacher, and he nominated her for the teacher of the right. year, and she came to this game and came to see him, and was talking about what kind of student he was. And how they had a rule that you know if you don't if you don't pass you don't play, and she did him a favor one time. Herschel Walker split out wide to the left. Excuse me, John. Brown gives to Hampton. Not much there. Met quickly by the middle of the Cowboy defense. Leon Lett. Go ahead. Anyway, so no, so he was walking, but I mean, here, here you see a guy top of a big guy. Guys are hitting him, and last night he was Mrs. Hamilton this, Mrs. Hamilton that, but. He wasn't going to be able to play in a game because he he wasn't passing. And so she said, you're not going to play. And then he started to walk out of the room and he said to her, please call me back. Please call me back. <laughs> she did and let him do makeup work to pass to play. And she's here as a result. Here's Dave Brown chase finally gets it out of there. To Keith Elias, flag on the play. And it's right in the area where Dave Brown was, where it's going to be either an illegal hit on Dave Brown or it's going to be holding. Holding. It was a ladder. Now, when you see that, that flag thrown right at the quarterback's feet, it's always going to be one of those two things. Red Cashin, who lives in Fort Worth, not Holy, far from here. Number 59 on the offense, 10 yards to third down. Brian Williams, the guilty party. And number 59 is Brian Williams, the center. And again, I think it happened late because he starts off. He's okay there. And then I don't know that that was holding there. I mean, that that looked okay to me. I mean, you know, I mean, if you're a big old center and you got stuff like that happening in there, he did get a hold of the, uh, Ch Chad Henning's jersey, I guess, but that's pretty strong play, too, wasn't it? Third and 15. Brown, shuttle pass. Redskins ran that a couple of weeks ago and picked up key yardage in their victory over the, the Cowboys. Now the Giants try it. Yeah, and that's a, that's a tough situation there to run a shovel pass because they needed about 15 yards so that didn't help them there the thing that did help them though is they got about five or six yards closer for a field goal so Dan Uiso will try the field goal when the second quarter begins to begin the second quarter at Texas Stadium the Cowboys three nothing still working on the communication system that malfunctioned earlier on the Giants sideline. Well, you know, that's if the if you don't have communication from the booth to the sideline on one team, then the other team has to take theirs out too. This will be 40 yards out, plus a little bit for Dalyweso. Tommy Maddox holding. Dalyweso is no good. Maddox and Dalyweso signaled good, but the officials said no good. There's only one way to win that argument. The missed field goal, very close. You can see it's just outside. You know, they, what they do is they put, put an official under both ends of the goalpost, 
and then they look as it goes right over their heads. I've done that many times. <laughs> uh, he's still arguing uh, his case over there, but I mean, he's saying that it was inside, but it it was outside. Yeah, he's not going to win. Three nothing, Dallas. They have the ball at their own, just outside the thirty. Eggman a throw to Moose Johnston. Michael Brooks, the tackler. That was one of the things that the Cowboys added for this week, because they aren't a, a big crossing team where they have their, you know, receivers, tight ends, backs, wide receivers coming underneath or coming across, and that was a crossing pattern that time to Moose Johnston. They got about, oh, about four yards, second and six. And that was one thing that the Cowboys were going to do today is get the Moose a little more involved in their passing game. Emmett Smith, not much. A couple of yards, maybe three. Brooks again made the tackle. You know, Michael Brooks, if you can keep him free, you know, I mean, he's really an undersized middle linebacker, but if you can keep guys off him, he is a good middle linebacker because he's a good tackler. See, if you can keep him where he can come down the line of scrimmage like he did right there and make yep. plays like that where he doesn't have to take on, like, big centers and, and guards and those big 320-pound guys. Of course, what linebacker does want to take on 320-pound guys? But if, you, if those linemen can keep the linemen off of him, he'll make a heck of a lot of plays for it. Very quick. Aikman's tried to come out of the pocket and throw it. Finally throws it down. But somebody jumped early. No flags. Yeah, there now is there is, now there is one, yes. And it came late. That's, that's a surprise because the thing is, is, is once a quarterback gets outside the pocket, he loses his protection. Aikman was really upset. I think he's upset that he had to get out of the pocket because yeah. he didn't want to get out of the pocket. He's probably all, also upset because no one was open, and his third upset is that he got hit late. And he's already got two bad legs, two bad knees. Intentional grounding, number eight. The ball was not thrown back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe that's why he's upset. Goes down, foot down. Yeah, that's that's the rule, Pat. Is, is if he goes out, what, once he gets outside here and he's outside the tackle box, now when he throws the ball, it has to get back to the line of scrimmage. If not, it's throwing the ball away. You see, now when he comes out here, you see the 35 is the line of scrimmage. Now when he comes out here, he has to get the ball to the 35. I don't know that he didn't. It looked like somebody jumped before the ball was snapped. I could be wrong about that. Marshall feels the punt by Jeff. Arthur Marshall still on his feet, close to midfield. About the 47 where the Giants take over. Dale Hellestray made the stop. Troy Aikman cheering on his offensive teammates. These guys don't move. These guys don't move. The Giants move because the ball is snapped. Eric Williams is still in the stand. And Tuane didn't move until the, the defender has already passed him. Yeah, and then Troy Aikman had to throw the ball away. That was a legal hit by the Giants. And in throwing the ball away, you can do that, but it has to get back to the line of scrimmage, which it didn't. Tyrone Wheatley, deep for the Giants. And he gets his first carry of the day. Hit by Shante Carver. At about, no, he got about a yard. 3 nothing Dallas. One of the things that Dan Reeves wants to do is to bring in Tyrone Wheatley like every third series. And, of course, that's a, that's a change of pace from Rodney Hampton, where Rodney Hampton runs more inside the tackles. Tyrone Wheatley can get it out. Tyrone Wheatley's a little quicker. Rodney Hampton's stronger. All those different things. They're both about 230. Brown to Chris Callaway. Pushed out of bounds by Marion. But that'll be enough for a first down. You know, as you watch Dave Brown over the over the year, he's become a lot more confident. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I mean, just the way he carries himself, and and I, I think he's a lot better at this, a lot better at, at at play faking, ball faking, getting a spiral, a tight spiral on the ball, finding things, has a little more confidence, and I mean he's just a young quarterback that you can see growing. In fact, you can see the whole giant offensive unit gaining in confidence. This is Wheatley. 
ran over Howard Cross, and then Shantae Carver was there. Yeah, he was trying to make a move, and he, he couldn't wait, so he had to run into Howard Cross, his own guy. That's pretty typical of a young runner. Can't wait. Yeah, and that's and then you know that was the thing. Remember last week, Ricky Waters was talking about that. Yeah. He learned from Walter Payton. He said that on certain runs, you just have to have more patience. Second and nine. time he needed chased finally out of the pocket by left and now Blake Brown's going to take off and he just ran over it was Deion, Deion Sanders. Sanders yeah yeah and that was all about Deion Sanders he was trying to throw what they tried to do is get Deion in the middle and that's the guy he was trying to throw to watch the whole thing it's all about this he's trying to get Deion in there he's trying to get Callaway there Callaway falls down Dion has good coverage see but Dave Brown was looking at Callaway all the way and then when it wasn't when he couldn't throw it to him and he couldn't beat him that way he said well what the heck I'll just run on him but he was watching Dion Sanders all the way on that play and Dion was watching him go by as he ran over time out but Dion had good coverage on Callaway though. yeah a timeout for the Giants so they'll have two left. Christmas is coming. We're at Texas Stadium. Three nothing Cowboys. Callaway lined up in the wrong side. Four wide receivers. Herschel Walker moves back toward Brown. Leon left had him and he got away. Brown to the 20. 10. Out of bounds at about the five. It'll be first and goal from there. You know, that happened twice in a row here, Pat, where Dave Brown was trying to get a crossing pattern. Remember, we saw the earlier one. He was trying to get it to Callaway. This time, watch Herschel Walker come across. Dave Brown is looking there, trying to get him on the cross. Leon Lett changes his mind, and when he comes out there, there is no containment on his right side at all, and there's no one downfield. They'd run the whole defense out, and Dave Brown could run all the way down the four-yard line. First and goal, Giants at the three. Wheatley got about a yard. I think if I were Dan Reeves, I don't know that I wouldn't put Rodney Hampton in here. I, I think, think I that, would. That Rodney Hampton, he's putting an extra tight end and an extra offensive lineman in now, taking his two wide receivers out, getting two bigger blockers in here. But I think I'd put that guy in there too because he he's not only stronger, but he also has a great feel for goal line offense. I'm just going to say that down in here, he knows how what it takes to get it in the end zone. There's the best runner for the Giants so far has been Dave Brown. Wheatley deep. Touchdown Giants. Tyrone Wheatley from a yard out. And the Giants have taken the lead. And had they made that field goal, it would have been a bigger lead. Now you think back to last week in Philadelphia when the Cowboys let Rodney Pete scramble. This time the key play was a Dave Brown scramble. Yeah, a couple of Dave Brown scrambles and getting them down on the goal line there and that right side of the offensive line, you know, Lance Smith and Riesenberg and those guys controlling that right side. Well, they've already got more points, the Giants do, than they did on opening night when they were at home at Giants Stadium. And they're playing a heck of a lot better, too. Oh, boy. And you can see him gaining that magic confidence. Down the double team starts here with Doug Riesenberg and Howard Cross. They get the double team. This starts the hole. Then Greg Bishop pulls from here around here to lead Tyrone Wheatley through the hole. See, the double team starts to give you a haul right there. Now watch Bishop. Boom! Right there, he gets Woodson, and that gets Wheatley into the end zone. Dan Oiso kicks off to Kevin Williams, standing at the goal line. Reverse to Sanders. Nothing. Lost yardage. 
That didn't fool the Giants at all. That was great special teams coverage. That's uh, that picture. If you can see the stadium in the background is from the blockbuster video blimp. You know, with appropriate wind conditions, it can travel at speeds up to 90 miles an hour. It's equipped with rocket boosters. <laughs> what? It can. <laughs> no telling how fast it can go with those boosters. Yeah, you know what I did? I challenged him I to a race. Did. It used to be like 30 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour. And I said, anything that hovers can't go fast. Now what are you telling me, 90 miles? You didn't know that when you 90, made the bet? 90 <laughs> miles an hour? Yeah. Oh. Well, it depends on the wind. It can go faster than that with the booster. Have a hurricane. <laughs> And they're having his cane. Yeah, Emmett Smith, man. the ball carrier. Stacy Dillard made the stop. But they needed a double his cane. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know about those boosters. 95, no, those things. They're, they're like those old tackles in the old days that used to stand around the line of scrimmage and watch well, out for the draw on the screen. They have accepted the challenge. Yeah, they took the challenge. There's Deion Sanders in there now, wide receiver. Lined up way up there in the top. He's on the right, Michael Irvin on the left. Aikman gives it to Emmett Smith. And Smith around the corner, steps out of bounds. Again, let's send you back to Hollywood and James Brown for a McDonald's game break. In Philadelphia last night. Now we throw it back to him in Hollywood. He's quick. No one will raise him. Aikman. Flag on the play as Aikman was rushed hard Irvin yeah that was Robert Harris again yeah. Harris was a guy that that hit Aikman on the sideline when he when he threw the ball away Harris is the guy that got him here working against Eric Williams you know the first time of course I think that was on Derek Kennard because he snapped the ball early only number 22 on the defense Sparks on Irvin you see right here, there's there's Felipe Sparks right there. Again, they want to bump him, they want to be physical with him, but you have to get off him at a certain point. Yeah. You know, and Michael Irvin is such a, a physical wide receiver that Felipe Sparks has now had three penalties against him, but to be honest with you, that's the only way to play Michael Irvin. Emmett Smith again. He got about four that time. Even though you jam him outside, I want you guys stay with him. Stay with him, all right? Keep frustrating him, guys. You've got to get your hands on him every time. They're talking about Mike, Michael Urban. He's doing a good job on his disguise. That's Zevin Urelian. He's the defensive backfield coach, Pat, and that's what he was telling him. you got to be physical with him because if you're physical with him, don't let him get the ball. He will get frustrated. And that's what teams have been doing to Michael Irvin. They've been frustrating him because he hasn't been getting the ball. Six. Reverse. And this is Deion Sanders. And he got a first down with the reverse. Coleman Rudolph brought him down, but Sanders. He has quickness, doesn't he? Boy, he does. Yeah, every, everyone says that, you know, who's the fastest player in the National Football League? It's this guy here, Deion Sanders. And when he gets motoring, he can go. All you have to do is, I mean, knock a couple guys down because if he ever gets behind them, if he ever gets behind them, he's going to go all the way. You see, he started as a wide receiver there. He got a block right in front of him. There's Daryl Johnston got one. Michael Irvin didn't get that block for him. First and ten. And Aikman back to throw. First down. Pump fake. Ball slipped out of his hand. Irvin still came up with it. Then see Glenn back on the coverage, but Michael Irvin made the adjustment. Well, that's what they have to do. I think if you're a playmaker and you're the big guy in the on that team and they're going to get you the ball, but even if they do rotate towards you, even if they do get physical with you, you still have to get the ball to them. And that's what they're doing here. That was a rotation. They rotated up. The safety came over, but he just got in between them. And he is so physical and so good at the end of the play. If the ball is in the air anywhere, he is going to get it for you. That he, ball slipped out of Aikman's hand right there. He hates to throw a wet ball anyway. I know, but look how Michael Irvin will position his body where he's going to catch the ball and then position against the defenders. This is a Dallas timeout. So both teams have two left in the first half. It's 7-3 Giants. 
you think about Troy that. Aikman's eyes, you know he is watching Michael Irvin all the way. Now watch Michael Irvin. When the ball's thrown, he doesn't even look. He knows where the ball's going to be. He just goes and goes and goes. Now he takes that peek over his shoulder as he runs by Vincey Glenn. He has to get by Vincey Glenn. Then he positions his body to catch the ball and keep the off safety away from him. In essence, on that play, there were three defensive backs on Michael Irvin. Cowboy first down at the Giant 18. Aikman. Incomplete intended for Kevin Williams. And that's a bad throw there by Troy Aikman yep. because he had Kevin Williams. There was no one on Kevin Williams. And I think he's so used to throwing to the other guys, he's not used to throwing to Kevin Williams, but that's not Kevin Williams' fault. I and mean, watch Kevin Williams. The defender on his side fell down. You see the ball flutter? He hates, as I said a minute ago, he just hates to throw a wet ball. Well, it, it's darn near beyond hate. It's yeah. very close to paranoia about a wet ball. And he threw that one like he was flopping one out of there. Here he gets to Emmett Smith. Emmett caught from behind by Harris. Yeah, there's a guy that's playing a pretty yeah. good game on defense today, is say. Robert Harris. He was a guy that, you know, forced Aikman to throw the ball away. He was a guy that hit him, although there was a, a uh, penalty on Felipe Sparks. And he's a guy here on this play came all the way across the field to tackle Emmett Smith. And in essence, put the Cowboys yeah. now in a passing situation. There he comes. Yep, he came all the way across from left end, all the way across the field. Third and seven. Aikman under fire. Rolled and threw, tried to throw the screen pass to Daryl Johnson. He just didn't get there. Yeah, Stacy Dillard was there. What he tried to do, and this really isn't like the Cowboys. I mean, I'm surprised they just don't go back and try and throw the ball to Michael Irvin there, but they tried to, like, roll right. You know, which they don't do a lot of roll right, screen back or screen left. Stacy Dillard gets there. You see him roll out here to his right. Now he's going to try and stop and throw a screen back here to Moose Johnston, but uh, I'm not too sure where that one came from. I, that one's never going to work. Bonio. Relax, relax. Hits the field goal. That's his 19th in a row. That one from 33 yards. And it's 7-6. The Giants over the Cowboys. Mitchell Walker. The ball carrier. I'm sure my partner John Madden does. Well, you know, the funny thing about that play is I had Cotton Davidson later. And every time I'd talk about coverage, I'd say, boy, now this is a tough coverage. You know, because the guy disguises and all this. And Cotton would say, I'll tell you about a tough coverage. He said, I'm playing for the Texans. We're playing in Boston. I throw a slant to Burford, and some fan comes out and knocks the ball down. I said, I've blown it. You know, because Cotton was one of those guys that exaggerated. That's the first time I've seen <laughs> was. Cotton was telling the truth all these years. And the fan just disappeared back yeah, into the and front. Nothing Fisher happened. didn't see it. They said, no, game's over. Game's over. Here's Dave Brown back to throw it. Coming across the middle is Mike Sherrard, who makes the catch. The question, the Affleck question is, who were the eight original AFL teams? There they are, the Boston Patriots, the Bills, the Dallas Cowboys, the Dallas Texans, not the Cowboys, the Broncos, the Oilers, the Chargers, the Titans of New York, and the Oakland Raiders. And that's who they become. Of course, like you said, Dallas Cowboys are... Cowboys then moved in here, and the Dallas Texans moved to Kansas City. Good run by Hampton. Past midfield. Good run by Hampton. You know that crossing pattern, that one that Mike Sherrard caught just on the play before this, this is one thing I think that the Cowboy defense is very vulnerable to. I think the 49ers exposed them. Yep. I think the Redskins worked on that game plan. And until they put some of those fires out that were lit by the 49ers, this Cowboy defense is still going to be susceptible to things. Especially those crossing patterns. Second down. And they give to Hampton. Hampton stretches out. But I don't think he got the first down. 
The other thing that they're susceptible to is movement and motion. That's what the 49ers did and the Redskins did. And the Giants are not a big movement team. By, by movement, I mean, you know, shifts and motion and those kind of things. But in this first half, we're seeing as much motion and shifting from a Giants team that I've seen in a long time. The thing about the Cowboy defense is they don't change a lot of things. They just say sort of here we are. Here's what we're going to do and you got to beat us. That in a part that they have Deion Sanders playing man to man and the other guys playing zone and then they try and get him to look at one thing then do something else. Red Cashin says they need about six inches. That has to be quarterback sneak situation. I think Dave Brown is has probably been the most effective runner for the Giants in this first half. Oh, has. I would think if I were going to call a play and of course Dan Reeves calls the plays uh, this one has quarterback sneaks written all over it. Dan Reeves of course spent Third many down. years here as a player and then an assistant coach still well respected and liked by this entire area. Isn't it something how he still talks about Coach Landry. Yep. Said he had dinner with Walt Garrison Friday night. Brown gets to Hampton. And Hampton, just with his strength, got the first down. Yeah, that's that's the thing about Rodney Hampton is is you know you're gonna have to do some blocking, but if you get enough blocking to get him back to the line of scrimmage, you know, he's gonna get the first down for you just on his strength. I think Rodney Hampton has gone to becoming one of the most underrated players in this league. He's certainly a player you'd like to have. Brown fakes to him. Goes deep for Sherrard. Deion Sanders, the defender. And he was right with him. You know, all the giant receivers were talking this week about who Dion was going to cover. You know, one thing is on one part you don't want Dion to cover you because then the quarterback's not going to look there a lot. But on the other hand, you want to be the guy. I mean, here's Dion Sanders here. He's working against Mike Sherrard. So now Sherrard could say, hey, I'm playing in the game and Dion's covered me. And they're throwing deep to me and I beat him. I just didn't have both feet inbound. Well, Mike Sherrard was pushing off yeah. a little there too, wasn't he? They both were shoving. Chase gets the screen pass out to Hampton, who's chased from behind by Lenz, who misses. And Hampton gets close to another giant first down. Stopped by Fiant Miles, finally, Godfrey Miles. Uh, Dan Reeves is doing a good job of mixing up plays here, you know. You know, again, you know, we talk about Michael Irvin being a, a physical guy. Deion Sanders is physical when the ball is in the air. So Mike Sherrard was physical there with Deion Sanders. But they were both locked up just before that yep. ball got there, weren't they? They really. Third and one. They're four out of six in this game in this situation. Fake to Hampton. Aaron Pierce flag on the play. Deion Sanders back with him. And they finally got him. I think they're going to get one of them. This has been a very physical game downfield on both sides by the defensive backs, Felipe Sparks, and by Deion Sanders. They've gotten Felipe Sparks like three times already, and they got Deion Sanders on this one. That was a good call. Short yardage. Yep. You know, they get all up in there, fake, fake the run in there, and then throw that play pass. You know what, Holding Dave? Number 21 on the defense. Five yards. First down. Dave Brown has gotten to be a much, much better faker hiding the ball. Well, watch how he did that. You see how he started that? Then he put his head down. And you see what Deion Sanders is doing. He was all over Aaron Pierce. That faking and that ball handling ability goes back to Steve DeBerg. Right. And part of that is Steve DeBerg. Part of that is is good fake by Dave Brown and the other part is watch Rodney Hampton he puts his hands down like he has the ball and he jumps over like he's going for a yep. short yardage play giant first down the kid is to Hampton to about the 26 yard line of Dallas two minute warning both teams have just been notified and the Giants lead the Cowboys by one point seven six 
foggy for a couple of days and it hasn't gone away obviously. Leon let's move back in at tackle now. Brown back to throw it. Pass complete to Charles Way. Knocked out of bounds after he picked up a couple. Yeah, the Cowboys like to, to rotate their defensive linemen, so with Charles Haley being out, Leon Lett has moved to end, and then when they want to rotate, they'll bring Shante Carver in sometimes as the end, and then put Leon Lett back in it to tackle. I would think that, you know, with Charles Haley out and needing a dominant player, I think I would just leave Leon Lett yeah. out there at defensive end and let him dominate from there. Elias is in the backfield with Brown. Is Callaway in motion? Again, Brown gets away from Herman McCoy this time and slides out of bounds at the 15 and gets the first down. Hey, we're talking to Dave Brown yesterday, and he said the only weather that bothers him is wind. He said this wet ball and rain and nothing bothers him. But the other thing that he really likes here is he looks and looks and looks, and then he always keeps moving. And if you give him an open lane or an open area or a soft spot in the defense, he'll not only throw into it, but he'll also run into it. And he's been very effective in running into soft spots that this Cowboy defense has given him. First down, Giants. The fake is to Hampton Brown. Incomplete. Broken up by Deion Sanders. Intended for Callaway. Well, that was a good play fake there. <laughs> that was a good that. play fake, but then, then you throw to the guy that, that Deion Sanders is covering. Look at this. David Brown, 40, 42 yards. Smith, 45 yards. But watch a play fake here. Again, good play fake. The old bootleg. And then he had no one. He was trying to go to the middle. Callaway on the left side was his second choice. Second and ten. Callaway in motion. Brown to Hampton. Hampton inside the ten to about the eight. Couple short of a first down. Dixon Edwards tripped him up. Yeah, you would think the way things are going that they could darn near stay with, with Dave Brown running or Rodney Hampton running. Although I think in this first half that, that Dan Reeves has done a heck of a job of mixing plays up. Really? Mixing plays, mixing formation, mixing personnel, shifting guys, moving guys. And he's kind of kept this Cowboy defense off balance. Third and two. They're five out of seven on third down conversion. Brown to Hampton first down. Oh, he's like a missile. Yeah, if you can get that line of scrimmage, just like I said before, if you can get that line of scrimmage for him so you don't get any penetration and get him there, he can just put his head down and just paro, paro, powerful power the rest of the way. A lot of P's in that. Well, they said yesterday, and you said in the beginning, they had to be able to run. And they are doing it. Hampton by left. And that's the way to stop it right there. They, 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 they see, like I said, you have to stop him before they get to the line of scrimmage so he doesn't get penetration. That play, Leon Lett got penetration. Giant timeout. They have one left. The Giants lead the Cowboys by a point. They have one timeout left. And don't forget, coming up at the half, the Dockers halftime report with J.B. Terry, Howie, and Jimmy. All the scores, playoff situation. Second and goal at the five. The Giants with one timeout left. Brown. High in the end zone, intended for Callaway. He appeared to be open. Oh, and Brown's upset. He knows it. He had him. He had him wide open. That thing. All he had to do was get him the ball. Look at this drive here. This is the thing that is great for the Giants and really frustrates the Cowboys. You know, 14 plays. Look, almost five minutes they've had that ball. I don't know if that ball was a little wet or got away, but there's no spiral oh, yeah. on it. It's it, wet. It did look like a wet ball. And that just took off on him. Anytime you put the ball on this carpet, it's going to be wet. And he had Chris Calloway was wide open yeah. on that end line. 
third down. Brown to throw. He's got some room. Touchdown. It's a touchdown. Dave Brown. Dave Brown lost his shoe and everything. Lost his shoe, the, the ball. ball. He sold out on that. That's what you call a quarterback selling out because he knew he was going to take some hits. But he is going to watch him. He's, going to, he's looking to his left. Then he looks to the middle. Then when he looks out here, he says, oh, boy, look what I got. Again, finding a soft spot to run in this defense. Again, and then he just put that ball down. And now once it breaks the plane, yep. that's a touchdown, even though it did come out when it hit the ground. Extra point by D'Aloiso is good. And it's 14 to 6 Giants. Nine plays, four minutes, 17 seconds. They kept the ball. And there's a guy who sold out. <laughs> he still hasn't caught his breath yet. He's still trying to get all the air that he had before that run back into him. Because he, he he dove on that thing, lost a shoe, a shoe went flopping off. And the ball came flying into the end zone after he had broken the plane. Watch his eyes here right now when he sees it right there. He can see that if he can just beat one guy there that he can get a touchdown. And that's exactly what he did. Robert Bailey was the guy that he, yep. the Cowboys were in their nickel defense. Robert Bailey's number 23. He was the guy that he ends up having to beat. You see, but when he looks back here and he sees this, you see how soft it is in here? In other words, by soft, there's no one really between him and the goal line, and the only guy there was number 23, and he beat him, Robert Bailey. And, of course, Bill Bates comes across after he got to the... There's Dave Brown with Stan White. Look at those rushing comparisons. Yeah, who would have thought that you would say that in the first half, Dave Brown has rushed for more yardage than Emmett Smith after what Emmett Smith yeah. does, and everyone knows what he does to this giant defense. The Cowboys have 14 seconds remaining. Emmett Smith, and he got a little alley for a moment out to about the 32. Don't forget next Saturday of Fox NFL. 1230 Pacific, and nobody wants to play the Detroit Lions. Uh, I think, you know, everyone you talk to, they say, well, there's one team out there that worries us. <laughs> Always the Detroit Lions. Aikman takes the snap, kneels down. It's not a popular decision. Well, the fans are booing him, I think, because. Because the fans are frustrated, too. I mean, that was a great drive by the Giants. It kept the Cowboys off the field, got the Giants a touchdown, and the Cowboys are just getting frustrated. You know, they've only scored one offensive touchdown in the last six quarters. There was a flag, a penalty on that last play. But this, you know what you see it on the, on the sidelines, yeah. the coaches, the players. The defense, five yards, still first down. You know, you think back, they beat San Diego. They beat the Raiders. They beat Kansas City. Supposedly the three of the better teams in the AFL. In the AFC, excuse me. And then they start games within their own division. And they've lost two in a row, and they're behind in the third. Look at Bill Bates. He's yelling at the crowd. at Texas Stadium. The Giants 14 and Dallas 6. Now they have to work themselves out of that. That's Kevin Williams at about the one. They need something good, something big to happen. Outside the 30. Tito Wooten made the stop. Look at what's happened in the last two games. They've been outscored 31 to 7 in the second half of the last two games. And I think the thing that they have to do and they didn't do before is is when they come out and they're in a situation like this instead of going for a big one and trying to get a big play right away. I think they have to establish something. Let that big line do its work. Hand the ball to Emmett Smith. You know you know, get first down. Start there. Start to build a foundation. Don't panic. 
at this point. You just can't panic. Do what you do best. And that is run it. This is Emmett Smith. Smith in the giant territory to about the 46. Finally tripped up by Vincey Glenn. Good blocking out in front of him. How would you like to be a cornerback and you're looking and here comes big Nate Newton and big Larry Allen pulling around the corner with Emmett Smith, one of the best backs in football behind him. Now this is an awesome look. 61 wow. is Nate Newton. 73 is Larry Allen. Emmett Smith does a little straight arm there. Then boom, he gets a block there. Then he's going to get another block there. When those guys come out there and get on something, that is a way to start a second half. Uh, first down, Aikman will throw. Bat it straight up. He almost caught his own pass. Yeah, but he knew better because he could catch his own pass and get tackled there for and a loss. And have to run with two bad knees. That's yep. not the prescription. Two bad knees and two bad calves and a bad back and shoulder and Troy Aikman is is not a a healthy quarterback. But then again, how many quarterbacks in this league in this game are healthy at this point? Well, Isn't that the truth? It's a long season. Second and ten. Smith is deep. I think Emmett Smith started too early. They've had trouble since Donaldson went down and Derek Kennard replaced him. We've seen it a couple of times in this game, snapping too early, snapping too too late. I'm not sure uh, that I should single out Derek Kennard on this one. Well, on that one snap, I mean, that was his thing. Now, whether Emmett Smith just saw something he wanted to get started a little early, of course, the back can move before the ball snaps as long as he goes parallel to the line Illegal of scrimmage. Illegal motion, number 22 on the offense. Five yards, still second out. See, now he can move again and go in motion. See, now here's the motion here. Now, if he moves forward, then that's what they're going to call. See, if he moves forward right there before the ball snap, because they already had one man in motion, yep. Moose Johnston, and even though he did go parallel because there was another guy in motion, you couldn't have two guys in motion at the same time. Second and 15. Aikman drops it out to Smith. And there's no place for him to go. Giants played it well. He got a couple of yards, but that's all Corey Miller was there to stop him. Yeah, and I think the thing they have to do now is, is, is to get the ball to Michael Irvin. I mean, that's 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 the two things that they have to be able to do. I mean, that's what you know they call them the you know the triplets. I mean, you know Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, Michael Irvin, and they're the big pay guys. And if that's what they are, they're going to make plays now when they you need them. Got to produce, and you need them on third down and long yardage. Deion Sanders at wide receiver to Aikman's left, Irvin to the right. He is back to throw. For, for Sanders. Play. A flag on the play. Randolph was back there with him. And they have Michael Irvin on the other side, Deion Sanders down on this side against Thomas Randolph. And they're all arguing right there whether it's Deion Sanders or Thomas Randolph. Well, it's against Randolph. Let's have another look at it. Number three on the defense. Yeah, that has to be number 23. Randolph here on Deion Sanders. He didn't get started too soon, and he didn't get a bump. See, and he's looking back. Then he looks into Dion, and he just punches him there, pushes him a little, and then that ball probably couldn't have been caught anyway. I don't know. That was, that was close. I think they're starting to call this stuff close. I don't see. I mean, he may have gotten a hand or two up there. And it's bad. To about the 11. Stopped by Jesse Campbell. Well, if the Cowboys can't get a big play, then they needed a big break. And I think they got one on that play. You know, somebody was saying to us two or three weeks ago that Emmett Smith, the reason he was so durable is that that line was so good, he never got hit by any of the big guys. It was always the safeties or the corners that were tackling him. Recently, he's been being hit by the big guys. Yeah, and, and this offensive line, you know, Ray Donaldson is not in there anymore, but this offensive line is not as dominant as it was in the beginning and middle of the season. Second down, Aikman will throw. In 
incomplete or complete. Daryl Johnston. Well, that's the other didn't thing. come up with it. Excuse that's, me. That's the other thing. You see, like Corey Miller there, what they're really doing on these short guys, the underneath guys, they're really clamping on them. They used to give them, you know, more of a cushion. But now, if you see right down here, you see how tight they're playing on that. They're not backing off and letting them have a free run underneath. As they come out, they're jamming them and playing all the underneath, whether it's Jay Novacek, Moose Johnson, or Emmett Smith. They're playing them tight and rotating towards Michael Irvin. Third down. decisions if it's not. Boy, did Vincy Glenn tattoo Michael Irvin. Michael Irvin is going to come underneath, then come under control. See him then catch a ball and watch 25 come in there. Boy, he's zeroed in on that one right between the eights. Let's see intensity here, Pat, on Troy Aikman's face. Decision has been made that they'll kick another field goal. Would be Boniel's 20th in the row. He's hit three from that one from 22 yards away, and it's 14 to nine. The Giants over the Cowboys. Repair work now on Emmett Smith. The Cowboys to kick off. Trailing 14 to nine. Lewis feels the kickoff by Bonio gets out to the 30. Billy Davis made the stop. Emmett Smith in that last. Remember he had a bad knee a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago. Yeah, and then watch this play here, uh, Pat. When when Corey Miller comes in here to tackle him, watch is he grabs across on that on that left knee. See where he plants there? Then it looks like it comes underneath. You see as he uh -huh. grabbed it and pulled it back. And then when Emmett Smith gets up here, watch him limp. And then they and then they took him off and they're they're working on that left leg now. That, it that, looked that, like that they're trying looks, to stretch it there. That looks painful. Yeah, but if, if you heard it, you wouldn't want to put it in that position. No. This is Hampton. Rodney Hampton still going to the to the Dallas 41-yard line before Larry Brown finally trips him up. Boy, Big Rodney hole. Hampton saw that hole and he burst. I mean, he put it he put it in another gear when he saw it. Watch the blocking. The hole's going to be right here. You see, there's a hole, the, the lead block there. And look as he sees it there. He just turns on that jet and he just runs right by Dixon Edwards. Dixon Edwards was coming across and he had him square and then Rodney Hampton put it into another gear. And he went right by him. First down, Giants at the count of 23. Hampton again. Wrapped up by Miles. Yeah, we were talking about Rodney Hampton. You look, fifth consecutive year with 1,000 yards, and maybe maybe he was. I don't know if he was ready. I mean, he's, he's been in Pro Bowls and stuff, but maybe because of the Giants' record and the you know team not having as good a year as everyone expected, I think they finally... I think a lot of people have forgotten that Rodney Hampton is a very, very good football player. Week after week. Plays hurt, plays hard. Second down and nine. Brown. Had Darren Smith right in his face. Mike Sherrard. That was one of those where you have to have a hot receiver where you're not going to block them all. You have to get rid of the ball. Watch, here's the extra guy coming from here. Brown is going to get back here, and he sees this exactly as he gets back there. See, there's no one there to block Darren Smith. So what happens when then, then the quarterback has to get rid of the ball before he gets there? That was one thing when I coached, I never believed it. I didn't know how you told the quarterback yeah. that, that you weren't going to block them all. You're responsible. If there's an extra man, the quarterback's responsible. How can he do that? Here's Brown back to throw. Pressure again. He just throws it on the ground. Cowboy pressure. I think 
that was Darren Woodson. It is. And I think that he hurt himself on that play, too. But he was the guy that he was up on that side, and he came on a safety blitz. And Dave Brown was trying to come right into it. Look here, you're going to see right here. Up the wrong side. You're going to see right here. Yeah, he's going to come in. He's number 28. You're going to see him right there. You see him come in here, and then he has the he has a penetration there, and he he's the guy that that made Dave Brown stop. That's the arm that he had hurt before, and he just landed on it. He was coming into this this thing. He one of his he has a, on on one hand he had a broken finger and a bruised hand on the right hand. Remember in the wrist and he was shaking hands yesterday left-handed. This might like, be just one of those. It went numb. A stinger they call it. I think Darren Woodson staying down too long for just a stinger. But you may be right. Now he's shaking hands with that right hand, so yep. you, know, you can't have two things hurt at the same time. You know, like yesterday, the, the right hand hurt so much that he couldn't shake hand. Now when he hurts the left, he can shake hands with the right. That's a physiological that, thing. That's according to Dr. Madden. Well, no, I just, I, I, I know that. You can't have, if you have something that's hurt and you hurt something else more, then the thing that you hurt more is the thing that hurts you, and the thing you used to hurt doesn't hurt anymore. What about Novacek? He's got the bad knee, the bad ankle. He said they both hurt. No, you only have one. I mean, only one. If one really hurts, then the other one doesn't hurt anymore. How, how is it the highest one or the lowest one? or The one that hurts the most the one that becomes hurts the predominant most. over any other hurts that you have. And then, you know, because when you take, like, an aspirin or something, how does it know where to go? That's true. That's true. Which In that case, you got to take two aspirin. Which one does it go to? Well, one for each injury. But that was a big play by the Cowboys because third down and the Giants have had success. Remember in the first half, Dave Brown was running on all those situations. And that time they plugged all the lanes and they plugged it by bringing Darren Woodson from the corner. And you can imagine and better believe that that's one of the things that they discussed at the half. Barry Switzer. I wonder if the communications have gone out again, Pat. Red Cashin's over there talking to the Cowboys sideline. Remember the rule, if it goes out on one side, then you have to take it out on the other side. And I bet that's what happened. So the Giants have their punting team in. We'll see what Red Cashin says. No, maybe we won't. Maybe Red isn't going to tell the television audience. He's just going to keep it to the Cowboys and the Giants. Well, they're working again on the communication, so that obviously has to be what's wrong. Yeah, if it goes out in the Giants' side, Mike then the Cowboys Horan. have to take theirs off, too. Mike Horan back to punt. Kevin Williams deep for Dallas. The rain hammers down. And hard. Horan. High kick. Williams decides to let it bounce. It goes into the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20. That turf is really wet and it's getting wetter. Look at that rain come down. The hole in the roof lets it in. A lot of it. Down on the Giants sideline, he's gotten sick. You know, he's run so much yeah. in that in that first half, and I think that's what it was. Remember that that touchdown when when I said he sold out and he lost his shoe and he flopped in that thing, yep. I think I think that took a lot out of him. He may have the flu or something too. But that was quite a shot. Emmett Smith tackled in the backfield by Corey Miller. And now for another McDonald's game break. It's a stadium. The score is the Giants 14, Dallas 9. Emmett Smith, whatever was wrong with his leg. Apparently have got to straight down, and here's Aikman back to throw. Incomplete, intended for Irvin. Look at Felipe Sparks. He's yep. proud of himself because he's on Michael Irvin. He knows he's going to be physical all day. He's going to be as physical as Michael Irvin is. Then when Irvin doesn't get one, you know, he said that's one for him. He's a scrappy little guy. That yeah, he Felipe really Sparks. is. I mean, he's. He's a guy that, you know, has a lot of spirit and a lot of life in him. And, you know, the game is fun, has that twinkle in his eye. And 
You know, kind of plays it the way it should be played. Big buddies with Darren Woodson. He, he better get out here in his guy, though. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Aikman back to throw it. Up into the pocket. No attack. He'll have a Dallas first down. Jesse Campbell made the stop. Yeah, something was wrong there because Fleepy Sparks didn't get out here on Michael Irvin at all. That giant defense wasn't right and it wasn't set. Jay Novacek is going to run it in here. You see, he just he just comes in. He's going to run right up the middle, and then see right there in the middle of the screen, running in. That thing is wide open. You know, that's what you get with that too deep. You know, that zone, that cover two. You can get a deep middle and get past those linebackers. Emmett Smith. He's there. Got about five. After that whistle blows, there's always someone that yells easy. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like a fight, you know, break it, take it easy, take it easy. You know, the whistle blows easy, easy. You know, don't don't be getting up on guys and don't be, you know, stepping on people and that kind of stuff. Look down at that number at the bottom of that graphic, the two fumbles inside the opposing five. Today, he has made a conscious effort, and you can see it, to cover up the ball. He's not a fumbler. No, never he's, was. he's not. I mean, he just had a, a few... I mean, stuff happened. And it's, it's happened to Emmett Smith. Gets another carry. He gets a couple. Not enough for a first. Well, you know, they're not getting that movement in the middle no, anymore. No. And, you know, yeah, I mean, it's not all Derek Kennard, but I don't think that middle of the line, when they had Ray Donaldson... Nate Newton, Larry Allen in there. They used to get more boom. I mean, the ball snap, boom, they'd get that push right in the middle now. You'd see guys just fly out of there. And they, and you don't now. I mean, you you saw that play again. Good giant defense, but that cowboy offensive line that was once dominant isn't dominant the line of scrimmage anymore. Third down. Aikman. The pass is caught by Kevin Williams. Williams gets the first down and more. That's a big catch for him. Big catch for the Cowboys. And you see, here's Kevin Williams here. He's going to come right on a slant. Troy Aikman throws that ball perfectly where he doesn't have to wait for it. He can catch it and keep running. That's that 49 thing. That's yep. that Jerry Rice where they bring him in there and you hit him with that slant where they don't have to stop and they can just keep running. And that's one thing that Kevin Williams can do is run in the open field. Aikman gets to Smith and Smith whirls down to about the 26. Jesse Campbell made the stop. Now this Cowboy crowd is coming alive because they know that this is the way the Cowboy offense plays football. And, you know, they complete a pass here, complete a pass there, and then from this point on, there should be a heavy dose of Emmett Smith. Second down and about two. Emmett Smith. Tackle before he got back to the line of scrimmage by Michael Brooks. Brooks, as you said, is very active. And that's the place to do it. You're going to see Michael Brooks here, and he gets penetration, and he gets to this point right here. You see, if they can get to the line of scrimmage, then they're okay. But see, Michael Brooks is in there. He's two yards into the backfield before Emmett Smith gets to the line of scrimmage. Look at the way Emmett Smith has run. To the left, okay. To the middle, better. But to the right... Not much there. Third and three. He's going to throw it. Throws it quickly. Incomplete. Kevin Williams was the intended target. And here comes the field goal unit again. And if there's anything that the Cowboys have really had trouble with, I mean, I think they've had trouble stopping a run on defense. The other thing I think they've had trouble with is third down conversions. They look like they can... Yep start to get some things going but then they get to third down and they haven't had a lot of success converting those third down 45 yards out this time for Bonio he's made 20 in a row plenty of distance 
Bonio's fourth of the day from 45 yards. And it's 14-12 with 443 left in the third quarter. And looks like he'll be set to go back into the giant lineup. Yeah, he was throwing a football in before he was throwing something else. Up. Bouncing kick. One of the up linemen was looking for somebody to take it. Kozlowski. Nobody wanted it. So he kept it. 14-12. The Giants lead Dallas in the third quarter. The Dallas Cowboys 12. Pat Summerall with John Madden at Texas Stadium. Big Larry Allen just selected to the Pro Bowl for his first time. Congratulations to all of those who were selected. Brown gives to Rodney Hampton. Well, this is good hitting weather. You hear those guys down there? I mean, those in the in the trenches. Everyone taking off on that. That's good. See, see Darren Woodson's up in there. Emmett Smith, when he went back to the Dallas sideline again, this time they really looked like they were looking and working on his knee. Yeah, the, the time before they were stretching his quad is what they were doing. When they had that leg back, they yeah. were stretching the muscle. That last time it looked like they were checking his knee. Round of Hampton. Hampton picks his way for a giant first down into Dallas territory. Brock Marion tripped him up. Yeah, one thing is this this giant offensive line are really staying with their blocks because on that play Rodney Hampton started to the right and then there was nothing there and then he had that patience but he felt that back side or that left side so that left side away from where he was going those guys were staying with their blocks you know like like Bishop and Jumbo Elliott and then he was able to get in behind them first down Giants Callaway is a man in motion Brown fakes fires outside to Callaway incomplete you know Dave Brown was talking last night about how this field here in Texas has the biggest crown of any place he plays and when you get on one hash mark, it's hard to see that sideline. And it looked like on that play that he had trouble there with that crown, you know, because he threw that ball low. And he said that he always does that. And he came out early to try and adjust to throwing the ball across the field. See, when they're on the left hash mark like they are now, left hash mark, throwing the right sideline is very hard to see. Throwing downhill, you only see about from the knees up on your receiver. Hanson. Hit by Darren Smith. Brought down there, but Hampton got the good yardage again. And they keep feeding Rodney Hampton. They don't have to worry about Dave Brown throwing from the left hash mark to the right sideline and the no. ground in the field. Terry <laughs> Allen, look at that. Go ahead, John. No, this is how they've done it. I mean, it was Terry Allen, and it was Ricky Waters, and today it's Rodney Hampton. I mean, if there is a secret to get to the Cowboy defense is with a good running back. And that's what Dan Reeves said to us. We've got to be able to run the ball and they have. Brown back to throw. Gets it outside to Sherrard. Knocked out of bounds by Larry Brown. Well he got that ball in on the out that time. Here's what the here's what the crown looks like. Matt, look if you look if you look at the players on the far sideline, you can only see from just about waist up. So if you're on this this side looking across the field, you don't see anything except the top half of their body. Quarterbacks think about stuff oh, like sure. that. Hampton. And Rodney Hampton with that surge gets down to the 15-yard line of Dallas, just carrying people with him. He's been doing that all day. And he's been running with, you know, we've seen him run with quickness. We've seen him run with the power. Charles Haley there. He said he was only going to be there for the first half, but he's getting a little concerned now. And I think the Cowboys at some point, they have to get concerned. I think at some point they have to get desperate. I think at some point they have to get a little mad. I mean, they look like they're just too passive. Hampton again to the 10 on a first and goal from there. Rodney 
Rodney Hampton in the middle with his runs up the middle. 21 carries, 112 yards. Well, that's, that's running. That's running between the tackles, and that's what he does best, and that's what you have to stop. But again, good blocking, good lead blocking by Charlie Way. You know, this, this offensive line has really controlled the defensive line of the Cowboys. That's Hampton again. And again, he carries people to about the six. Darren Smith. Yeah, the Cowboys tried to get penetration on that one. In fact, they did get penetration. They got Leon Lett in there. Look at Dan Reeves has a walkie-talkie now. Different kind of communication. I think, I think one of them goes to the quarterback's helmet. I don't know, so no wonder some of that stuff doesn't work all the time. I mean, you got headsets. They got stuff around their waist. They got stuff in their hands. In the old days, a quarterback when they were the field general called plays. Johnny United. Second, and they're at the six-yard line. On second down again at Hampton. Hampton to about the two. Godfrey Miles will be on the bottom of that pile. Giants in the red zone inside the 20. They've had three opportunities. Two touchdowns and one missed field goal. I think this is time for the Cowboys to start getting mad. That's the end of the third quarter at Texas Stadium. And the Giants lead the Cowboys 14 to 12 and they're headed for more. That's what Dave Brown did then. So the Giants will try a 20-yard field goal. Galariso to kick it. And they lead now 17-12. Back at Texas Stadium. 17-12. The Giants lead the Cowboys. What cause is that? When the, when the steam comes off the head. Is that when hot mixes with cold? 100% humidity. Is that what it is? I don't know what it is. No, but I mean, sometimes you just play so hard and sweat so hard the smoke starts coming out the top of your head. Well, your head's hotter than the air. Kevin Williams gets out to about the 17-yard line. Keith Elias down to stop him. Yeah, the Giants are really whipping the Cowboys here today. And, and you just have the feeling that if the Cowboys are really a championship team, that they have to start playing with some urgency. And the results of a drive and possessions have to be better than field goals. Well, you know, the guy that always scored all the touchdowns, in fact, he was going for a record, is going for a record, is Emmett Smith. And I don't think he's the same. I don't know what the offensive line is, but at some point, like I said, they have to start playing with urgency. I don't feel that they're playing with urgency. Pass is incomplete. Kevin Williams dive for the throw from Aikman. And I still think they have to get the ball to Michael Irvin. I mean, they, you know, that, I mean, you just can't say, well, Fleepy Sparks is being physical. They're rotating. They got a safety on that side. Even if they do that stuff, you got to find a way to get them open, and you have to throw them the ball. You just can't say just because they rotate to him that you take him out of the game. Well, you hate to go back to what the 49ers have done for years with Jerry Rice. He's been double covered for years, and they, they don't give up going to him. Now, if your guy is a playmaker, you got to get him the ball to let him make plays. Aikman back to throw it. Has protection. Emmett Smith is hammered. Trying to set up a screen pass had no chance. Yeah, because this 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 giant defense is really swarming. I mean, you look, everything is tight up there. You see, they're tight and playing tight to the line of scrimmage. They're playing the short guys tight. They're playing any screen. They're they're spying and they're jumping it. They're not backing off and letting stuff develop. That they're hitting it before it develops. Mike Crow was all over Emmett Smith. Even if he caught it, there was nothing there. Third down, ten. Aikman to throw. Yes, it is a catch. The Giants very unhappy. 
be as Michael Irvin that caught him just before the ball came down. That's a heck of a throw here by Troy Aikman to get that ball out there and a heck of a catch by Michael Irvin. See, he has the left foot. He held that left foot, then held the right foot there till the ball got there. And had possession. And that's why he's a playmaker, and that's what they have to do. They have to get the ball to him. A critical, crucial first down for Dallas to keep things going. Aikman pump fake, goes deep. Wait on the flag. Oh, Vincey Glenn's keeping his hands behind him. I don't know about that because all he did was cut off the pass pattern. He has to be able to do that. Here comes Red cashing down they, to get they, the call. They have to get straightened out on this pass interference. Officials do. I mean, that's the second time I've seen that where, where a guy just pass cuts off the pass pattern. 25 on the defense. First down. Now watch Vincey Glenn here. He's just cutting off that thing. See, he can do that. He can take that route. Watch him. Watch 25 come over. To me, he doesn't do anything wrong. He just cuts off that angle. Because now if you hit him while you're trying to get in front of him, that's a penalty. That's a different story. But if you run in front of him without hitting him, that can't be a penalty. They have to let him do that. Here's Aikman back to throw again. Inside the 10 to Kevin Williams at the 5. Randolph made the stop. 26-yard gain. Aikman to Williams. Get a perfect pass. Williams is up here on top. It's a slant pattern. Just as he breaks, he hits him right there as he doesn't break stride. You can't throw it any better than that. No, nope, that's perfect. Thomas Randolph was there. Really had pretty good coverage against him. But Aikman threw a perfect pass to Kevin Williams. First and goal at the six. Emmett Smith deep. Johnston in motion. Get off to Smith. To the five, and that's all. Hamilton made the stop on Emmett Smith. Again, the, the offensive line of the Cowboys really isn't controlling the offensive line of the Giants because they are getting penetration. They're getting someone in there all the time. I think there's something wrong with Larry yeah. Allen. The Cowboys need Larry Allen now. He just pointed to his head. And That's something wrong with his helmet or his equipment in some fashion. Replaced by Ron Stone. Second and goal at the five. Novacek moves this time. And Smith. Emmett's heading for the end zone. Touchdown, Dallas. And he's limping again. That ties an NFL record with his 24th. We talked about playmakers. We talked about urgency. Throwing the ball to Michael Irvin, which they did. They got the penalty, handing the ball to Emmett Smith. Getting a block by Moose Johnston on the goal line. And they're going to go for two here in this situation. But watch Moose Johnston in the block that he gets right here. That's a block right there. That springs. In fact, he got two got of two. them. He got two guys that, that would spring the corner for Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith. Stayed in, limped after he scored the touchdown, but limped back to the huddle. They're going to go for two. The Cowboys lead by one. Smith in the backfield behind Aikman. They throw a fade. And it is incomplete. Michael Irvin leaped. Felipe Sparks was with him. So the Cowboy lead remains a point. 18-17. 12-48 left to play in the contest. Cowboys by one. Michael Irvin. And the leap for the two-point conversion, which was unsuccessful. And now they're looking at his knee. And on the touchdown, they were looking at Emmett Smith's knee after that play. Herschel Walker returns the kick to about the 27-yard line. Emmett Smith, they're still doctoring on the sideline. See, now when stretching. they pull that up, yeah, they're stretching. That's the quad. That can't be a knee. No, 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 that's not the knee, but it's the same leg that the knee injury was on, but it's a quad muscle. In fact, after he scored the touchdown, 
I saw him grab the quad, which is, you know, the muscle, the big muscle in front above the knee. That's what they're trying to stretch right now. On first down at their own 27, the Giants now down by one. Brown fake to Hamlin, chased by Tolbert, gets it there, and Pierce. Pierce gets the Giant first down. Stopped by Brock Marion. Dan Reeves has really called a good yep. game today. I mean, he's, you know, with, with what he has to work with here, you know, Dave Brown moving, Dave Brown running. You know, a couple receivers can catch one once in a while. Rodney Hampton, a big runner. He has really had a good game plan and really managed this game well. Well, Dave Brown's done a good job also in executing. He looks like a different quarterback from what he did a year ago against the Cowboys. He's He's for a McDonald's game break, let's again return to your Hollywood studios and James Brown. And Pat Atlanta had control of his KB, the Cowboys in a struggle. They lead the Giants by one in the fourth quarter, 11-27 left to play. 18-17 Dallas. Callaway was the man in motion. Brown gives to Hampton. Rodney Hampton hammers up the middle and into Cowboy territory to the, about the 42. They, he not only hammered, he burst. Oh. I mean, this is really something. Rodney Hampton's having a career day today. I mean, watch him. It's a lead draw. He gets a thing here. He makes a, He gets a good lead block. And then watch right there. I mean, he feels that thing and just gets a burst right at the end and takes two or three guys with him. Darren Woodson down again. Well, Darren Woodson's a warrior. I mean, he's in there trying to make tackles. He's in on everything. Brock Marion, the other safety, is not having a good day. Like he always seems to be standing around the pile. He has a, a broken finger or thumb on one hand, and he really, he really hasn't been able to help stop the run much. Look at the rushing yards, 196. And again, Dan Reeves had told to us when you ask him what the key to winning and beating Dallas today was, he said we got to be able to run the ball, and they've been able to do that. The other thing he said is shorten the field. You know, have a short field for them and give the Cowboys a long field, and they've done that. Brown to Hampton, going wide, and Rodney Hampton near another giant first down if he doesn't have it. They, they've just worn this defense out. You know, the defense, there's... There's Russell Maryland there who isn't who isn't suited up today. We already saw Charles Haley. We know he's not there. And this Cowboy defense is just getting tired. I mean, if you watch him out there in the field, this is a tired group, this defense. It really is. You remember in years past when Russell Maryland was available and they had other play people, Chad Hennings, they rotated those tackles and kept them fresh. Now they can't do that. No, and they're just wearing them down. This giant offense is wearing the Cowboy defense down. Short yard is Hampton. Gets into the secondary, down to about the 20. Brock Marion again wrestled him down. Scott Case has replaced Darren Woodson. Yeah, but watch the block in here. I mean, watch these five guys when the ball snapped just take off. I mean, they get a double team on Chad Hennings. They knock him way out of the box. Look at those holes that Rodney Hampton has to run in. And then Rodney Hampton does the running, too. I mean, guys are just going off him. Part of it is, is poor tackling by the Cowboys. I mean, they're yep. reaching their arms out, and you can't do that when you have a Rodney Hampton. Brown again. Gibbs to Hampton. Woodson is back. You know who else is blocking well is Charles Way. I mean, you know, I mean, part yeah. of it is the offensive line, and you always got the tight end in there. But that number 30, <laughs> that Charles Way, he's making a heck of a lot of blocks on those lead blocks. You know, he's doing a lot of stuff that Daryl Johnston does. And doing them very well. Rodney Hampton has carried the ball 29 times for 169 yards. He'll probably get another carry right here. Hampton down near the 10 and down near a first down. Stopped by Darren Woodson. I'll tell you, Dan Reeves knows what to call there. I mean, what to look on that sheet. You just feed Rodney Hampton. 
I mean, he has a warrior out there today that is that is whipping some people. Boy. And he just got to keep doing that. Got this a bunch is, of guys whipping some people. I, I know. Look at that lead block again by Charles Way. You know, he's the guy that the line has done a good job of controlling the defensive line of the Cowboys. And then Way has done a good job of leading on that linebacker. Third and one. Hampton got the one. It'll be first and goal at about the nine. Shante Carver made the stop. Yeah, we talked about the defense being tired. This is why. Look at the time of possession. 29 minutes 15 seconds for the Giants that not only wears down that defense but I'll tell you the other thing it does it frustrates that offense that cowboy offense having to stand there in the field and not have the ball of course it frustrates the coaches too yeah. first and goal at the nine and all you can do is look at Rodney Hampton run Hampton to the five and inside the five Brock Marion made the stop yeah, you just watch Rodney Hampton out there going like he is. He didn't make the Pro Bowl this year, Pat, but I know one team he's going to make. Uh, he's coming out here, but this guy, if he were at home and he were playing this game in Giant Stadium, he'd get a standing ovation. He should. Look at that. Yeah, 92 yards after the initial contact. There's a warrior today. Second and goal. It's Callaway in motion and Hamp. This is Wheatley. Who's replaced Hampton? And Wheatley scores, but a flag on the play. Wheatley got in. But a penalty marker down. And the Giants have really controlled the ball. That was the tenth play of this drive. Look at Dan Reeves. You know what the penalty, or you know who the penalty's against. And you know what it is. Hey, I remember a time in the NFL, Pat, where they never called holding penalties against the run. Holding, number 30 on the offense. Ten yards. Call against Charles Way. Yeah, Way has been doing such a good job of blocking, and most of his good blocks have been lead blocks on the inside. This was one on the outside. Barry Switzer, when you when your defense isn't stopping them, you start hoping for penalties. And that Cowboy defense has not stopped the Giants. Rodney Hampton has had some day. If you're wondering about yards gained, it's 218 set back in 1950 by Gene Roberts. Elias, I beg your pardon, not Wheatley. Hampton gets a little rest. Well, you know, if they didn't have that play called back, that would have been, that would have put the Giants in great position. That was a big penalty against them, but I think on that last down, that second down, is when they needed Rodney Hampton in there. This down here, because of the penalty and the situation, now becomes a passing down. Three wide receivers. Third down, Brown drops. And now he's going to run, and he's cut down by Leon Lett. He has devastated the Cowboy defense running. That time, Lett was up to the occasion. Well, I think they finally figured out that you got to take those running lanes away. You always have to take a passing lane away. And what Dave Brown did to him in the first half, they finally figured out on third down, on passing downs, you have to take that running lane away, too. Yeah, he's so in to attempt the field goal with Tommy Maddox holding from 27 yards, roughly 27 and a half. Daddy Wieso pumps it through, and the Giants recapture the lead 20 to 18 with five minutes and 17 seconds left called on Charles Way when they called that touchdown back to Tyrone Wheatley. But that looks like a pretty good block. He gets a good lead block, knocks Darren Woodson down. Wheatley scores the touchdown. Now here he is again right here. Watch this block here. He's going to be leading on Darren Woodson. This was a touchdown, but the penalty there, they called a penalty there for holding on Charles Way. 
And the Giants had to go back and then settle for a field goal. So that's a big penalty. Now that we still kicks it off. This is Kevin Williams. The wedge in front of him. Williams can't keep his feet. Finally struggles to the 41 yard line before he goes down. Rodney Young tripped him up. He almost broke it. They're working on Dave Brown's ankle. He limped off after that last play. The Giants over the Cowboys. Pat Summerall with John Madden. I just saw Eric Williams down there, Pat, hitting himself in the head. <laughs> And I think that's the way I said someone has to get mad. I mean, you, you, know, I mean, you have to get this urgency. And I think maybe Eric Williams is starting to show he was in the he was in the huddle just hitting himself in the head. And now you're talking. Eggman back to throw it. Giants got a blitz going. The ball to Darrell. Johnston first down. He slipped down. It rained all night, all day until just oh, a few minutes ago. It was coming down hard. Watch Eric Williams here, Pat. We said he was hitting himself. Watch him. He picks up this linebacker. He's going to stay with him now. <laughs> Watch how he finishes it off. <laughs> An overhand right. First down, Dallas. Maybe Eric Williams is getting back where he used to be because the one time he was the most solid lineman in the league. There's Emmett Smith. Still on his feet. Almost broken. Till about the 38. Sparks tripped him up. Today's game is being produced. By Bob Center and directed by Sandy Grossman. The associate director is Rich Russo. The broadcast associates Mike Roy and Fran Morrison. Stage manager is Rich Nelson. Studio is produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy. And the executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. And the announcers, Pat Summerall and John Madden. Second and four. Aikman to throw. Has time. Gets the ball to Irvin. A flag on the play. A flag on the play. Irvin made the catch. One out of bounds. Sparks is yelling. I'll tell you one thing about Felipe Sparks. He came here to Dallas to compete, and he has competed as hard as you can compete all day. This is against Dallas. I mean, he's done it physically and emotionally and verbally competing. Interference. Number 88 on the offense. 10 yards. Still second out. Follow Michael Irvin. Uh, here's Michael Irvin. Here's Felipe Sparks here. Watch him. He's looking in at the quarterback. He's playing his own. Then, then he turns and he just got pushed off with one hand. I don't know about that. That's. I mean, it, it did push off. And he's been getting away with that for a long time. But this officiating crew has been awfully touchy today. Second down at 14 now. 3.37 left on the game clock. Giants lead by two. Aikman's protection is going better. The Giants come up with the interception. Felipe Sparks, we were talking about the guy that's been competing all day. That was right on the sideline. Troy Aikman tried to force that ball into Michael Irvin. Felipe Sparks had great coverage on that play. Troy Aikman is looking up there to get the replay. Watch Felipe Sparks here. He's underneath. He's between Aikman and Michael Irvin. He gets the ball, comes down with one knee. Remember the rule, one knee equals two feet. If you have one knee in bounds, that takes a precedent over two feet. Watch him. He catches the ball. Watch the right knee is down there. So he caught that ball in bounds. That's the name of a book. Yep. One knee equals two feet. Sleepy Sparks did it. Watch him. He's underneath. Now he's going to go. He's getting between him and the ball. He catches the ball, and he did have the one knee in. Hampton he gets the carry, and he hits again straight ahead for about five. Stopped by Leon Lett. 322 left. The Cowboys have all of their timeouts left, as do the Giants. The score is 20 to 18. Giants. The Cowboys just took one. So they have two left. That's the standings in the NFC East. 
Dallas 10 and 4 going into this game. The Eagles have already won. Dallas should lose. And the Eagles would move into first place in the NFC East by virtue of a better record within the division. Second and five Giants at their own 40. Brown a half to hit right at the line of scrimmage. Stretches for perhaps a yard or a half, maybe Godfrey Miles was the first cowboy to make contact. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Another Dallas timeout. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys and the National Football League is prohibited. A career high for Rodney Hampton. He has had a busy day. He's had a great day. Yeah. You know, and and a lot of it was his running. I mean, he's been able to you know run most of that between the tackles. They knew who the runner was going to be. Dan Reeves knew that. You know the way to beat the Cowboys or have a chance to beat the Cowboys is with your running game. And of course he did it. He called on Rodney Hampton. And if they were going to do it Rodney Hampton had to do it and he he rose to that occasion today. And with that occasion he's passed some some pretty good runners in giant history. Eddie Price back in 1951. Joe Morris of course. And Hampton moves up. Third down. They need about six. And Brown's going to throw it incomplete. Way, Charles Way. Yeah, he's had Charles Way open a couple times, and Charles Way either dropped the ball or he didn't get him to him. I mean, the, the call was a good call. The play fake was a good play fake, but getting the ball to the open guy, they just haven't been able to do that in these situations. Watch number 30, Charles Way there. I don't know. He just he just dropped that. Dropped it. Although I don't know that he would have had the first down anyway. I don't think he would have. So Mike Horan is in the punt. And Deion Sanders back on the turn with Kevin Williams. Sanders handles it. Adam Stryber down to make the stop on Sanders. Don't forget to go away from right here right now. Yeah, this one isn't a bad one here. No. I mean, you have one team that's trying to get kind of revenge, you know, the division thing, Dan Reeves and all that against a team that was supposed to be one of the best in football and was thinking of Super Bowl. 2.59 left. The Cowboys are down to one timeout. They still get the clock stopped at the two minute warning. Aikman back to throw. Pass complete to Kevin Williams. Wrapped up by Thomas Randolph, short of a first down. Just barely. No huddle offense. First down. Aikman wheels it out to Smith. Smith gets out of bounds. Stop the clock. Now all the Cowboys have to do here, they they only have one timeout, but they're going to get another timeout at the two-minute warning. Right. So they have plenty of time, and all they have to do is get in in field goal position. So that's what they're thinking about. So they need about you know you have to get about 20 yards to get to the 50, and then about 20 more. So they're talking about picking up on these downs about 40 yards but they have to get first down second down Aikman looks right throws left incomplete Kevin Williams the intended receiver See, and that's the thing that you always assume you always assume they're going to get first down and then of course the Giants the thing they have to do is stop them here and then I'm sure the Cowboys will go for it on fourth down. So the Giants have to play two big plays of defense here to win the game and the Cowboys of course have to get a first down or two. Well we were talking about something on the way over to the stadium when Alvin Harper was here a lot of the things that teams do on defense they couldn't do or didn't do because they respected Alvin Harper. They feared Alvin Harper. He's not here. Kevin Williams, midfield. 
Randolph. Kevin Williams getting the single coverage because of the double on Michael Irvin. I think Troy Aikman's trying to get in one more call here, one more play before the two-minute warning. He has seven seconds. He'll get us one more play. Pass is caught. Incomplete. Must have hit the ground. Kevin Williams again, the intended retard target. Two-minute warning now. Bonio loosens up. He's hit 21 in a row. We got fire in the stadium this afternoon in spite of the rain. Second and 10 on the Giant 49 for the Cowboys. Eggman has the pass deflected. Yeah, one thing you have to be impressed with the Giants is they really haven't softened up their defense. You know, everyone says that prevent defense, they get too soft. And here you see they, they still keep on the four-man rush. They're still using line stunts. They're still getting pressure. They're still getting a push on Troy Aikman. That was Coleman Rudolph. In fact, I would think on, on this one here, it's a big down to, to bring some heat here. I mean, I think a lot of teams make mistakes when the other team only needs a field goal of going too soft on defense. Defense cannot go soft here. Not playing a nickel. The pass is caught by Michael Irvin. What a throw and what a catch. And uh, what a critical first down for Dallas. Yep, that's who you go to. He's on Felipe Sparks up there on top. The last time they threw it, Felipe Sparks got that one. This one, Troy Aikman got it into Michael Irvin, and that was all Michael Irvin. I mean, that's, that's using a body. That's a heck of a play. First and ten Dallas. They need to get closer. Incomplete behind Emmett Smith. They're not close enough, I don't think, for Bonio. No, they aren't. His career longest is, is 47 yards. Longest this year is 45 yards. They need another first down here is what they have to get. And the, again, the giant defense has to stop that first down. And I think I think you got to bring some heat. I think I think I think maybe you have to bring a linebacker. Maybe you have to bring five. And I know when you do that, you know that you expose your coverage a little. But I think you have to get there. You can't let Troy Aikman get in the ribbon. They don't appear to be setting up a blitz. If it is, it's a late one. Aikman, Novacek had it and dropped it. Or did he? I don't know if he did. You don't see that often. But nope. again, Jay Novacek. They didn't know if he was going to be able to play just the other day, and he didn't practice all week, and he practiced for the first time on Friday a little. I was there at practice that day, and he was out there for about half the practice, and he went in early. But he only had about 15 practice plays all week. Third and ten. And I think the Cowboys still need about ten more yards. Another first down. Aikman retreats. Still no blitz. The pass is caught by Kevin Williams. A catch for Kevin Williams. Whatever funk or whatever shadow he's been in, he's come out of today. He's getting out of it today. That that was a great catch. I mean, he got he got open and he just lays out. Watch how he stretches out to catch that ball. I mean, not only stretching out, getting your hands out there, making that catch, but then holding on to it. I mean, look at that. Whoa, that's a heck of a catch. That's a playmaker catch. That's it. And, and again, good pass protection by his offensive line and Troy Aikman making that throw. First down at the Giant, 26. Aikman fires. And Novacek hangs on at the 20 or 21. Bonio is going to be on his shoulders if they can't get in. Again, the Cowboys still have one timeout. And I don't think they want to take it yet. You don't want to take your time out yet. You want to save that for a field goal. Yep, they just took it. <laughs> you think there's no pressure on a kicker? Just watch his face. The giant 21-yard line. Here. Second and four. That was a giant timeout. Yeah, I was going to say the Cowboys still have one timeout, which is a big thing because now. You can throw the ball inside. You don't have to throw it outside or you don't have to throw it in the end zone. 
you can throw the ball anywhere because you still have one timeout left. When you're out of timeout, then you have to throw the ball to the sideline or the end zone. Second and four at the Giant 21. Jackman Gibbs to Emmett Smith. Enough for a first down at the 15. And that's the other thing you can do when you have one timeout left is you can run the ball. I still think they ought to take a shot at the end zone. I think if you take a shot at the end zone, you have a chance for a touchdown. If you don't make it, you have a chance at a field goal. So I think you get a two-way go. Clock is stopped with 42 seconds left. 20 to 18. Two seconds left. The Giants 20, Dallas 18. First and 10 at the Giant 15. 20 to 18 the score. And it looks like the Cowboys are in a run formation here that they're not going to take the shot at the end zone. Although I think that's a good call Two to tight take end. the shot at the end zone. Flag on the play. A penalty marker down. Johnston was the ball carrier. For the snap. Number 73 on the offense. Call against Larry Allen. Watch the lead, 42, 42. Yeah, what the Cowboys are doing now is they're just trying to get on a hash marker in the middle of the field, run the ball out, and kick the field goal. Well, most of the soccer-style kickers are more effective from the left hash mark. So you think they just want to leave it there in the left side? Because their other alternative could be to get it to the middle. See, the ball will be spotted wherever it's down. Yeah. So if it goes on this hash mark or to the left of it, it's on that hash mark. It's in the middle. They spot it where it is. Novacek is the move, man. They give the ball to Emmett Smith. And Emmett covers the ball. He got body wrapped around it. Michael Brooks made the stop. And as we were talking about, Pat, they're going to leave the ball on the, on the left hash mark for Bonio. Bonyol has hit four today. 20 to 18. Clock is running down to 15 seconds. Emmett Smith has been limping all day long. He can barely get off the field. Yeah, we saw two great warrior running backs today. Rodney Hampton on the Giants side and Emmett Smith on the Cowboys side. They let the clock run down to two seconds. Bonio. It's a good thing he's got shoulder pads because he's got a lot of weight on his shoulders. You know, they call me names I didn't like to be called. <laughs> well, you just stay there and listen to him? Yeah. See, Bonio didn't do that. He ran off the field, and then he went through his vision stuff, and then he came back on like he wasn't out there before. Well, the line of scrimmage is going to be about the 17, so it's going to be 35 yards. Novacek holding. Hellestray snapping. Bonio kicking. And he hits five in a row. And the Cowboys escape over the Giants. 21 to 20. It was a struggle. And the big players, the playmakers made the play. And so did Kevin Williams. 